Hey, it's me, Vicky Marie, and um, I hope you're all well on this, what day are we on? Wednesday evening, it's very warm here in Spain, a little bit humid. Um, I don't know if there's Real Madrid are playing tonight, if Charlie comes on later I'm sure he'll know, because uh, the bangers were just going off, so I don't know if Real Madrid are playing or something's going on. <clears throat> but as always, whenever I start my lives, the bangers start going off, the dog starts barking. It's like you could put literally put money on it. But anyway, there was only one banger. So if it is real, because Real Madrid are playing, I just have to hope that Real Madrid don't score. Uh, okay, and I wanted to start tonight by singing, things can only get better now i know i can't sing but i've just been in such a good mood after uh, the general election was called and uh it was so i don't know if you watched i i, I am going to do a video about it but obviously not tonight i'm talking about peter folding tonight um i may do it at the end of this live and then people who don't want to hear it about the elections can you know go off toddle off and some people will want to hear about it but I don't know if you saw Rishi soon that statement, you know, and he was soaked wet through because it was peeing down with rain. And then the protesters in the background were singing, things can only get better, or playing, things can only get better. It's just sort of made my day, to be honest. So it's been a good day. It's been a good day. Oh, okay. That's what I wanted to talk to you about today. Now, let's have a look at... Let's have a look at Rishi Sunak announcing that there's going to be a general election. There's nothing more. Now, there'll be some of you won't want to watch that. Fair enough. Uh, but I just want to see, see him being rained on. Let's have a look at the... the so it's quite... Uh, it was a shock to everyone. The Rishi Sunak decided there's going to be a general election. Half of his own colleagues are absolutely outraged. Because they're not ready for an election. Because Well, they know they're going to lose their seats anyway. Um, let's see if I can find it. Where will I find it? God, it's all over the Spanish news. It's interesting. Well, it will be, I suppose. Okay, let's have a look at Rishi Sunak. In the last five years, our country has fought through the most challenging times since the Second World War. As I stand here as your Prime Minister, I can't help but reflect that my first proper introduction to you was just over four years ago. I stood behind one of the podiums upstairs in the building behind me. I told you that we faced a generation-defining moment and that we as a society would not be judged by some government action, but by the small acts of kindness that we showed one another. You met that challenge, and then some, and I have never been prouder to be British. And when I introduced the furlough scheme, I did so not because I saw a country simply in need of desperate help, albeit we were, but because I saw a country whose future hung in the balance. Yeah, so it was him that he was the Chancellor, wasn't he, during COVID, so he brought in the furlough scheme, which of course was very popular with a lot of people, the people that were on fur uh, furlough, sorry, not furlough. But of course, it's all got to be, you know, it's, it, it costs the country a lot of money, of course. Um, but he's going to concentrate on that because that's really probably the only positive thing that he has done. So he's got nothing else. I mean, really, if you sit and think, what has Rishi Sunak done for, you know, what's better because of Rishi Sunak or even because of any of the governments, to be honest, what is better in Britain now? than it was 14 years ago. What is better? Nothing. Nothing is better. I could be bold and trust in the tens of millions of you at home that you would rise to the moment. Or I could accept the inevitable millions of job losses and pick up the pieces. In truth, it was no choice at all. I have never and will never leave the people of this country to face the darkest of days alone and you know that 
because you've seen it. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, the, the, oh, just, you know, I could get really quite angry. So he says, I will not leave the people of this country to face the darkest days alone. You know, uh, there's more food banks than McDonald's now in Britain since the Tories have been in. You know, people who are working can't afford to feed their families. Uh, it, he He's earned another, you know, however many billion pounds or his wife has or whatever. He doesn't know. He's just so out of touch with real people. He, I, you know, I mean, a lot of politicians are, but he especially is. He's out of touch even with other politicians <clears throat> he's on a different planet you know well he could be like elon musk he'll be setting up a bloody rocket station next as i did then i will forever do everything in my power to provide you with the strongest possible protection i can that is my promise to you because for so many of us it's easy to forget the scale of what we've been through we were hit by a pandemic that upended normal life who would have thought that the government would ever tell us how many times a day we could leave our homes? Then, just as we were recovering from COVID, war returned to Europe. Oh, war returned to Europe. You know, but it's, it's been the same for every country. It's not just everyone suffered with COVID. Uh, well, what he's forgetting to say is, though, his government, they parted through COVID while everybody else was following all the rules. You know, someone needs to pick up on that. So he was fined for attending to a party during COVID. You know, even the Queen sat on her own at her own husband's funeral. Uh, she she didn't feel she was more special than everybody else, but he did, and his government did. Uh, and people that need won't forget that. I, honest God, I think he's on a different planet because if he thinks he's got any chance. I've been voted in. With Putin's invasion of Ukraine sending your energy bills spiralling. Oh, yeah. I came to office, above all, to restore economic stability. <laughs> economic stability is the bedrock of any future success. Whether that is rising wages and good jobs, investment in our public services, or the defence of the country. And because of our collective sacrifice and your hard work, we have reached two major milestones in delivering that stability. Our collective sacrifice. So, just wondering what he sacrificed. So he says it's a collective sacrifice. We know, well, you know, if you're in Britain, well, I know what my family have sacrificed and now it's affected them. What has he sacrificed? Nothing. He flies in a helicopter everywhere he goes. He has a police consort like all around... He, he has not sacrificed anything. Showing that when we work together, anything is possible. Our economy is now growing faster than anyone predicted, outpacing Germany, France and the United States. Robin. And this morning it was confirmed that inflation is back to normal. This means that the pressure on prices will ease and mortgage rates will come down. This is proof that the plan and priorities I set out are working. I recognize that it has not always been easy. <laughs> some of you will only just be starting to feel the benefits. And for some, it might still be hard when you look at your bank balance. But yeah, not for you though. It's not hard when you look at your bank balance, is it? In fact, your bank balance has increased by millions. Millions. What people can't even... Your bank balance this year has increased by more money than most people will even see in a lifetime. So, you know, when you look at your bank balance, you'll be quite happy. But this hard-earned economic stability was only ever meant to be the beginning. The question now is how and who do you trust to turn that foundation into a secure future for you, your family and our country? Now is the moment for Britain to choose its future to decide yeah. whether we want to build on the progress we have made or risk going back to square one with no plan and no certainty. Earlier today, I spoke with His Majesty the King to request the dissolution of Parliament. The King has granted this request. 
Well, he's just getting wetter and wetter. But, you know, it doesn't matter. He's probably a Gucci suit or something. But he's got about 100 more hanging up in the wardrobe. It doesn't matter to him if he ruins his suit. But I bet, I bet he went in there from after this. I bet he went back in there, pulled his jacket off, started swearing, saying, what would the effing rain and the guy playing things can only get better in the distance? I bet he was really annoyed. And we will have a general election on the 4th of July. This election will take place at a time when the world is more dangerous than it has been since the end of the Cold War. Putin's Russia is waging a brutal war in Ukraine and will not stop there if he succeeds. That war has also made it all too clear the risk to our energy security. In the Middle East, the forces of Islamist extremism threaten regional and ultimately global stability. These tensions are exploited by extremists who seek to undermine our values and divide our society. He just always makes me laugh when he tries to be tough because I always call him the Winnie the Pooh Prime Minister because he's just like, he's not tough, is he, at all? You know, he liked, he liked, he took his girls to see Barbie. That was his choice. He likes, you know, he's not a tough guy and he's like trying to be tough, like tough on Putin. But Putin would just you know, spit him out. ...here at home. China is looking to dominate the 21st century by stealing a lead in technology. And migration is being weaponized by hostile states to threaten the integrity of our borders. And these uncertain times call for a clear plan and bold action to chart a course to a secure future. You must choose in this election who has that plan. Who is prepared to take the bold action necessary to secure a better future for our country and our children? Now, I cannot and will. He just thinks people are stupid. I mean, you know, they have been in power for 14 years. You can't blame everything on the last Labour government. You know, with the best will in the world, it's been a disaster from start to finish. It started with Brexit. And then it was like all the different changes of Prime Minister, you were, then there was Boris Johnson, Liz Truss, then him. None of them have been any good. What have any of them done? Re honestly, genuine question is what is better after this 14 year, 14 year government, you know, Tory? What is better? What is one thing that is better in Britain? Nothing. I don't think there's anything. Maybe I'm wrong. You tell me. Not claim that we have got everything right. No government should. But I am proud of what we have achieved together, the bold actions we have taken, and I'm confident about what we can do in the future. We've tackled inflation, controlled debt, cut workers' taxes, and increased the state pension by £900. We've reduced taxes on investment and seized the opportunities uh. of Brexit to make this the best country in the world, to grow a business. Oh. Put record amounts of funding into our NHS and ensured it is now training the doctors and nurses it needs. The best country in the world to grow a business. Brexit has ruined business. Because British companies now, it's so difficult for them to deal with Europe. You know, Europe with their trading partners, their neighbours right next door, and now everything costs more. They're all whinging about it. Is he, you know, I just honestly, I just think, are you in a parallel universe? You know, Brexit has ruined British business. There's no business that's been made better by Brexit. Or again, if someone can think of one, please tell me. But I, I don't know. I, I'm genuinely cannot see how, uh, do not know of one business Except maybe, you know, the migrant smugglers has been made uh, more lucrative after Brexit. But <laughs> all the British business is better after Brexit. So everything costs more money now. ...in the decades to come. We've oh. reformed education and our children are now the best readers in the Western world. We prioritised energy security and your family finances over environmental dogma and our approach to net zero. We fully funded an increase in defence spending to 2.5% of GDP. We made a decision to invest more in local transport that you actually use rather than endlessly plough more money into HS2. We set out a comprehensive plan. Well, he never uses public transport, ever. 
he, get, he just gets a helicopter everywhere he goes. Uh, you, you can't swim in the sea anymore. You can't swim the river. You can't drink your tap water. What? <laughs> the trains cost a fortune. If you wanted to get on a train and go from London to Manchester, it costs you over a hundred pounds. It's ridiculous. And to reform our welfare system to make it fair for those who pay for it as well as those who need it. Immigration is finally coming down and we are stopping the boats with our Rwanda partnership. And we well, will we ensure that the next generation down. grows up smoke free. I hope that my work since I became prime minister shows that we have a plan and are prepared to take bold action necessary for our country to flourish. Now I've stuck with that plan and always been honest with you about what is needed, even when no, that's been you haven't. No, you because haven't. I'm guided by doing what is right for our country, not what is easy. I can't say the same thing for the Labour Party. Oh, no. Because I don't know what they offer. And in truth, I don't think you know either. And that's because they have no plan. There is no bold action. And as a result, the future can only be uncertain with them. On the 5th of July, either Keir Starmer or I will be Prime Minister. He has shown time and time again that he will take the easy way out and do anything to get power. Whatever. If he was happy to abandon all the promises he made to become Labour leader Whatever. once he got the job, how can you know that he won't do exactly the same thing if he were to become Prime Minister? If you don't have the conviction to stick to any... Do you know, he must have been a fool to... Um do this speech while he was wet through like that because he just he's a drip he looks like a drip and he's actually dripping the drip anything you say Look if you don't him. have the courage to tell people what you want to do and if you don't have a plan how can you possibly be trusted to lead our country especially even at this elected. most uncertain of times I th I th <laughs> He wasn't even elected. And I don't know if you saw in the news that, you know, I'm a bit of a politics junkie, so I'm probably going to bore you with this, but uh, Kemi Badenoch, who's a Tory, she made some ridiculous comment the other day uh, that now, uh, now that we were after Brexit and we were free from European legislation, now we can all sit outside and eat and drink coffee, you know, because we're free of European regulations. As if in Europe, people don't sit outside and eat or drink coffee. You know, most, every restaurant's got an outside terrace. What's she talking about? You know, they're just like, it's the gaslighting of the people. Because there will be some people out there who go, oh, yeah, that's good. Now we can eat, you know, we can sit and eat in the freezing cold outside on uh, the pavement. Oh, brilliant. Uh, can't do that in Europe. Maybe some people don't know that that is European life eating outside on the terrace if they want to you know it, do they they really do think people are stupid that's so uh, annoying over the next few weeks i will fight for every vote i will earn your trust and i will prove to you that only a conservative government led by me <laughs> will not put our hard-earned economic stability at risk can restore pride and confidence in our country and with a clear plan and bold action will deliver a secure future for you, your family and our United Kingdom. Oh. <laughs> it's just important to us, it's important to me because I have a brief that is UK wide, but also because I'm a, I'm a committed unionist. I think no, the union of the UK no, is something that delivers more for every part Let's of the UK than breaking that union up say. will do for anyone. So we should look at, we should, so this is a response. <laughs> Tonight, the Prime Minister has finally announced the next general election, a moment the country needs and has been waiting for, and where, by the force of our democracy, power returns to you. A chance to change for the better your future, your community, your country. 
Uh, it will feel like a long campaign, I'm sure of that. But no matter what else is said and done, that opportunity for change is what this election is about. Over the course of the last four years, we've changed the Labour Party, returned it once more to the service of working people. All we ask now, humbly, is to do exactly the same for our country and return Britain to the service of working people. To that purpose, we offer why you should change Britain with Labour. One, because we will stop the chaos. Look around our country, the sewage in our rivers, people waiting on trolleys in A&E, crime virtually unpunished, mortgages and food prices through the roof. It's all, every bit of it, a direct result of the Tory chaos in Westminster. Time and again, they pursue their own interests rather than tackling the issues that affect your family. And if they get another five years, they will feel entitled to carry oh, on God, exactly as they are. Please, God. Nothing will change. <coughs> a vote for Labour is a vote for stability, economic and political a politics that treads more lightly on all our lives, a vote to stop the chaos. Two, because it's time for change. Our offer is to reset both our economy and our politics so that they once again serve the interests of working people. We totally reject the Tory view that economic strength is somehow gifted from those at the top. Over the past 14 years, through all the crises we've had to face, sticking with that idea has left our country exposed, insecure, and unable to unlock the potential of every community. But a vote for Labour is a vote. Uh, so I think that was Amethyst then just asking why Keir Starmer is a Sir, because he was the Director of Public Prosecutions. He's only just come into politics not that long ago. He had a long career as a lawyer and he ended up being the director of public prosecutions and he was given a uh, he was knighted for that so that's why um oh what did i do then i pressed the wrong thing um so yeah the thing is you know some people think Keir Starmer is boring I hope he is boring. I like boring for a politician. I just like a normal politician like who sit. I like the way he talks about service, you know, um, like not politicians in my eyes. They're, they're supposed to have a higher ideal, aren't they, you know, to change Britain. It's Britain, it should be Britain first and then their party second. You know, with the Conservatives, it's all about their party, what they can do, their mates club, you know, what they can give out to each other, what money they can make, even though they're rich anyway. They're just, you know, someone like Rishi Sunak, he's so rich, why is he even Prime Minister? You know, just go off and go on a cruise or something. He just wants to say he's been Prime Minister. You know, it's not because he wants to be Prime Minister because he wants to change Britain for the better, you know, make people's lives better. That's not why he wanted to be Prime Minister. He just wanted to say he'd been Prime Minister. Um, that's what I think anyway. I don't think uh, Rishi Sunak has got any you know, ideals, like to change Britain for the better, you know, and he can say all about him being British, but he's also, he's got an Indian passport and he's got a green, an American green card. So he'd probably go off and live in America. Now, I was watching some programmes today and they were saying that he may have called an election because his, his wife has said to him, she's sick of it all. She's sick of it all. It's not the fun that they thought it would be. And he doesn't like being criticised. I think Rishi Sunak, he's probably been pampered his whole life. 
and he probably thought that when he finally got to be prime minister everyone would think he was great and he was this brilliant prime minister and they don't you know so he gets all testy doesn't he it's like well what do you mean i'm not a brilliant prime minister and apparently well this was just something i was hearing people say but again it's just rumors political rumors uh, that his wife and the fa his family have just said, look, we've had enough. We don't like being a, we don't like you being a prime minister because nobody likes us. We don't <laughs> we don't like it. And so he's got annoyed because it's not going the way he thinks it should. And that's why, you know, he just wants to go. It would be interesting to see what happens to him afterwards. If he doesn't win, which I can't see how he can win, but anyway, you never know. Things happen sometimes. But if uh, Rishi Sunak does not win, what will he do then? Will he stay as an MP or will he go off to America or to India? To turn the page on all that, a vote for change. And finally, three, because we have a long-term plan to rebuild Britain, a plan that is ready to go, fully costed and fully funded. We can deliver economic stability, cut the NHS waiting times, secure our borders with a new border security command, harness great British energy to cut your bills for good, tackle antisocial behaviour and get the teachers we need in your children's classroom. But most importantly of all, we do all this with a new spirit of service, country first, party second a rejection of the gesture politics you will see in this campaign i have no doubt from the tories and the smp i'm well aware of the cynicism people hold towards politicians at the moment but i came into politics late having served our country as leader of the crown prosecution service and i helped the police service in northern ireland to gain the consent of all communities Service of our country is the reason and the only reason why I am standing here now asking for your vote. And I believe with patience, determination and that commitment to service, there is so much pride and potential we can unlock across our country. So here it is, the future of the country in your hands on the 4th of july you have the choice and together we can stop the chaos we can turn the page we can start to rebuild britain and change our country thank you bloody needs changing as well oh god uh, i uh, think it was craig who said yeah we need some boring we need some but politicians are supposed to be boring <laughs> it's like I'd, I'd just like to not be ashamed of being British like it's it's become you know living abroad honestly uh you know Britain 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 it's not the same now it's not the same where people think British people are great like they used to they don't you know uh over these years the the, the British reputation just in general uh, for everything is just just gone just gone I, I don't know what have we you know we've been a bit of a laughing stock so yeah i do think that if we had uh if Keir, he won't be perfect no but you know politicians aren't perfect are they i suppose none of them are but i just think at least he's got a bit of gravitas at least he's going to be at least he'll have been elected you know, so you had uh, Boris Johnson was elected and he won a landslide and I know he was popular with a lot of people. And I think Boris Johnson would be a great guy to go out with for a drink. You know, he'd probably be hilarious. But, you know, he wasn't right for a prime minister, not in my eyes anyway. And that's where it all started at the embarrassment. Like the Benny, he's the Benny Hill prime minister. Then we had Liz, Liz Truss, she's the lettuce prime minister. Do you remember <laughs> Do you remember that thing where they were saying uh, they had a lettuce and they were they were to see what would last longer, the lettuce or this trust, trust and uh, Liz, the lettuce lasted longer. She destroyed the economy. I don't know where they ever get this thing that the conservatives, uh, the with the conservatives, the economy's in 
safe hands. You know, no, it isn't. <laughs> I mean, she totally, you know, her and that kamikaze quarting completely destroyed the uh, economy. So we've had the uh, Benny Hill Prime Minister, the Lettuce Prime Minister. Now we, we've got the Winnie the Pooh Prime Minister. That's um, uh, Rishi. And if, if Keir gets in, he'll probably be the boring Prime Minister. But you know what? I, I'll settle for that. I'll go for that. Nice, boring Prime Minister. I just want a, a, a government that gets on with Europe, you know, because that will help make my life easier uh here in spain but also it makes them you know because it's all tit for tat people forget you know when if we chose to leave europe and then people moan because they've got to do things like get a visa to go into europe or you know uh it's not so easy to become a resident now in spain if you want to live in spain it used to be dead easy literally just showed your passport uh, and it got stamps and that was it, you're a resident. Now you need, oh, my God, what you don't need, you need so much money in the bank, you need private health insurance, uh, you need a regular income, show you've got a regular income coming in, you've got to jump through hoops to be a resident in Spain now. And um, and that's because, don't forget, works the other way. So when Spanish people want to be residents in Britain now, they have to jump through ho hoops. So that's... It, you know, whereas before it was, uh, you know, Spanish people could go and live in uh, the UK if they wanted to. I, I don't know why, but uh, if they did want to. Uh, and uh, British people could come and retire over here in Spain or work, live and work here in Spain. Now you've got to, you know, you've got to have certain criteria before you can work as well. So difficult now to get residency in Spain compared to where it used to be. Uh, which is a shame, you know, because what people don't also remember, I think, sometimes people say, oh, you know, Spain relies on uh, Britain for tourism. Well, actually, it doesn't because everybody wants to come to Spain on holiday, not just British people, you know, all of Europe, all the Scandinavians. We've got a lot of Canadians here now, Americans even. Everybody wants to come to Spain because it's a nice place to live. So, in fact, now Spain's getting a bit anti-tourist uh, because they reckon that the tourists are taking all... Because of Airbnb, a lot of people have turned... You know, what were rental flats before that people could rent long-term, now a lot of people are renting them out as Airbnb. So there's less uh, rentals for Spanish people to live in. So there's a bit of a backlash at the a backlash at the moment. But good, could you imagine if Boris Johnson? Ah, oh, don't don't. It has been chaos, hasn't it? It's been one thing after another, one prime minister after another. You lose track of who, you know, who's the uh, Chancellor of the Exchequer or the Secretary for whatever. You know, the Cabinet changes so often. It's like musical chairs, you know. But um, it has been chaos. It has been complete chaos. So it'd be nice, yeah, a bit of stability, a bit of boringness, you know, just steady progress, things getting better. Just like to see some positivity. What's happened? To, what, David, you've got a problem with your phone. You've accidentally blocked Chumba. <laughs> David's accidentally blocked you, I think, Chumba, and now he's having problems getting it back. But he will. He'll sort it. He'll sort it. <sighs> oh, you won't be able to vote, Amethyst, because you'll be in the... You'll be in Spain. Can't you do a postal vote? You can do a postal vote. It's important to vote. I, whoever you're going to vote for, I always say to people, you know, you 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 know what my political leanings are, but uh, you know, if it doesn't matter to me who you want to vote for, I know a lot of people are quite like reform, don't the people that were previously maybe conservatives are going for reform, and fair enough. Thing is, what's just important is just to vote. 
because uh, it's important to vote. Even if you vote for the monster raving loony party or whatever. Oh, Chumba's heartbroken. Yeah, we don't want any more chaos. Too much chaos. It's not good. It's not in politics. Uh, because people are fed up. You know, people are miserable. It's like, it's like if I looked at, well, it'd probably be all about the election now. Uh, but, you know, in the morning, the first thing I do when I get up in the morning, computer on, is I do put on the news and see what's happened. It is so depressing. Everything's depressing. Crime, um, you know, the water, like now the parasites in the water, you've got boiling water if you're in the UK. Crime's up. There's, you know, there's never anything positive. It's about time we started having some good news for Britain as well, you know, like, I don't know. Oh, that's right. The Royal Mail's been taken. Yes, Ali, the Royal Mail. I don't know if people know this, but the Royal Mail's being bought by a Czechoslovakian guy. And everything's, uh, so it's going to go to only post, post only every, well, let's have a look. It's going to change the whole system. So the post, your post will only be delivered every couple of days instead of every day. Royal Mail taken over. And the thing is, um, let's have a look. It's already causing an absolute, you know, think as the greetings card industry is, you know, wondering how it's going to affect them. Uh, the second class postal deliveries are going to be cut. Uh, yeah, fears for the future of second class Royal Mail deliveries are growing amid a proposed 3.5 billion um, transfer takeover. So that's all going to go to pot. So your water's already gone to pot. Um, your trains have gone to pot. Your transport in general has gone to pot. And now the Royal Mail's going to pot as well, probably. So that, that's the problem. <clears throat> is we don't own anything. Britain, in Britain, every, Britain is owned by foreigners, you know, at the end of the day. All the big industries and things, and, you know, for me, water should always be private. All the utilities should not be privatised. Sorry, not they should be privatised. And um, transport as well, you know, and that's what we have in Spain, and it seems to work better. But anyway... Who knows what will happen. So if Labour get in, maybe they'll change some of those things. But you know, it's not going to be instant. You don't undo 14 years of uh, chaos and decline and decay. Won't happen overnight. You know, you don't change it overnight. So it's a big job that Labour's got. I don't know if they'll be able to get it. But uh, yeah, so it's a Czech billionaire who wants to buy the Royal Mail. And they're, who owns the Royal Mail now? So apparently it's owned now by International Distribution Services. <coughs> they own the Royal Mail at the moment. And uh, they've received this proposal of 3.5 billion from shareholder and Czech billionaire Daniel Kretinsky. But it's, um, gosh, so it was split. Let me just, yes, these are things. These are things that have sort of silently, do you think people didn't take enough notice? How did people let the government, I suppose you vote a government in and then they just do what they want because they've got the mandate, haven't they? But, so I didn't realise so apparently the Royal Mail was split from the post office and privatised a decade ago. <coughs> and it's legally obliged to deliver a one price goes anywhere universal service, which means it has to deliver letters six days a week 
Monday to Saturday and parcels Monday to Friday. But their performance in recent years has deteriorated, leading to heavy financial losses with customers regularly not receiving letters, including important medical appointments and legal documents on time. And the volume of letters are being posted has plummeted, with half the number being sent compared to 2011 levels. Meanwhile, parcel deliveries have become more popular and profitable. Uh, it's going to be a big shake-up, isn't it? Big shake-up. The thing is, would it, it wouldn't bother me if I only got mail three days a week, as long as you got them it regularly, would it? It wouldn't matter if it was three days a week. It's better than not getting it at all, I suppose. Anyway, it's not definite yet. Apparently, <coughs> Mr. Krit Mr. Kretinsky, Mr. Kretinsky. Anyway, never mind. I'm not even going to make a joke about that. He now faces a deadline: five o'clock on the 29th of May to make a firm offer. So there you go. So the. <laughs> It's all going wrong. It's all going wrong. Even the Royal Mail now is all going going down even more downhill. Dear me. Anyway. Hi Maggie. Oh, you have an eBay shop, Amethyst. Oh, yeah, because you do the... Uh, and yeah, everything's... That's why I took my shop down as well. You know, I had the shop with the merchandise. I'd like to do the merchandise, but it's just so expensive. So it's... But, you know, and I don't mind... Um, don't mind not making money on it, but I didn't want to lose money on it, which, uh, you know, so I've... I've, I don't even know what I'm going to do with that. I'm going to sort that out. But the other part, because Chumba was saying uh, about me, because I think she wanted to send me a necklace or something, about, so, oh, you should set up a post office box and that. But the other problem that we've got, because of Brexit, is if you post something from the UK to uh, Spain or anywhere in Europe, you have to pay tax now, special an extra tax that we never had to pay before. So somebody sent me something from the UK, I, then, I, and it's really ridiculous. Sometimes it's a massive amount that you have to pay. You know, it's like, you know, people send, not if you send through Amazon, though, and things like that, but I'm talking about somebody actually mails something from the UK to Spain, turn up at my door. Uh, I have to pay to receive the package. And it, I don't know if it works the other way. If I send something to Britain now, if you have to pay a special import tax, that's another Brexit benefit. Oh, they're, they're never ending these Brexit benefits. You know, so people here are moaning because, you know, their family sending them birthday presents or stuff like that. Can't do it now. Well, you'd have to do it through Amazon. Can't just pack up a little package and post it off because they'd probably have to pay 50 euros just to receive it. So that's another Brexit benefit. Ruth, I did watch some of them, but they're scams. They're scams. They've been, I've, I've looked at uh, some other information about those videos. It's a scam, that. I don't believe it. Anyway, uh, you know, and I'd already decided just with watching five, ten minutes of this load of rubbish. But now, you you know, that's what people, some people are saying, and it may not be true, but that, uh, and that's how I felt about it. I didn't feel like it was any, it was true at all. So, sorry. Sorry, but thank you for sending them to me. I like it when people send me videos. I always have a little look if I can, if I've got time. Sometimes they're too long or they're too, and I just haven't got time to, or 
and sometimes I put them in a folder to be watched and then they never get watched because other things happen but I do try yeah it's right Charlie Charlie knows because he lives in Spain so I there was someone I knew they uh, they had to be sent some keys house keys because the person they were selling they've got an estate agent and they were selling the house for someone and the person went back to the uk and forgot to leave the keys with them so they sent the keys back by post and they had to pay 200 euros tax on these keys because they're heavy Oh, did they let you off, Charlie? So that happened to you three times. Pocket tax, the third time I just pretended I'd moved house. As they wanted to charge you, yeah, 26 euros. Yeah, that's it. I, I've had quite a few things that people have sent me and I've had to just... Because the other thing, though, as well, even if you wanted the thing to pay the amount for it, they turn up at my gate and they don't have a card machine they want cash so and i've rarely got cash you know don't have much cash these days do we we don't deal with cash much so they've turned up and there was a, it was i think it was a, a jumper or something at christmas and um they wanted i think it was 20 odd euros to deliver this jumper and i would have paid for that because the jumper was a present so i can't remember how much she asked for it was definitely more than 20 euros and uh, but she didn't have a card machine so if you haven't got the you know i didn't have the cash on me so that was the end of that a mystery tax fee <laughs> yeah crazy and you're right, as far as those keys were concerned, Hannah, probably would have been cheaper to get the locks changed. You know, 200 euros for a bunch of keys. Uh, this is the reality we're living in under Brexit now. Like, And I bet that works the other way around. I don't know if I sent a package from here uh, to the UK. Because... If I thought that I could do that without, I might try and experiment with it because so I was thinking if I, like as far as the shop was concerned, if I had the things made up and actually sent them out myself, because the reason the shop, the merchandise shop that I had was so expensive, they give you three months where they only charge you one euro a month for the shop. And then after that it goes up to 25 euros a month or something like that well you don't make that much money off the things you know you make maybe one or two euros you know so unless you're actually selling loads and loads of things uh, it's just not worth it because you end up you end up spending the money because i was trying to make it where people didn't have to pay postage um but unfortunately that made it too expensive for me but anyway it's a long story but i'm still looking into it David, David can't get it. Can't get Chumba back. Yeah. Well, unfortunately, that ship has sailed. We're not in Europe, and it's it is horrible. It is horrible not being in Europe. It really, is horrible. Anyway, you know, as an, again, what's the positive of it? You know, if people say to me, oh, yeah, it's been great since we've not been in Europe anymore because uh, we can do this now and can do that now and it's brilliant. What? What? What is the advice? Where are, what are the Brexit benefits? Honestly, I ask people regularly, what, what is better after Brexit? Nothing. And then we had that stupid Kenny Badenot the other day saying, oh, yeah, it's great. We're going to be able to eat on the pavements now, you know, now that we can make our own laws. Like people in Europe don't eat outside all the time. Just crackers. Crackers. It really is. The Brexit is the biggest act of self-harm that any country had ever. I still can't quite get over it. Um, but I'll tell you, did 
do well out of Brexit. Rich people, rich people did well out of Brexit. So there you go. As always, rich people always do well. That's why they wanted it. That's why they lied to everyone, tried to make everyone think it would make a difference to the National Health Service or, you know, Boris's bus. All that money that was supposed to be going to the National Health Service, where's it gone? Where has it gone? Boris's pension package, probably. Exactly. Rich people did well. Rich people did well out of Brexit. Uh, and they're still doing well, aren't they? So that's what, you know. I mean, do you know, it, the irony of a billionaire standing there on a podium or a multimillionaire, anyway, I don't know if he's a billionaire, standing on a podium telling people that we've all made sacrifices. You know, it's crazy, isn't it? It's like Charlie Boy with his uh, Christmas speech, you know, saying, oh, try and live a simple life. You know, when he sat there in a crown and furs and, you know, great big scepter and he's got homes all over the world and telling us all to live a simple life. Just crazy. It is crazy. The world's crazy. <laughs> crazy okay i'm gonna go now i've done quite well with my voice i can feel it's a little bit <sighs> but craig that's not a brexit benefit being able to eat on pavements everybody in europe eats on outside it wasn't a european thing stopping people from eating on pavements but i'll tell you something i hate eating on the pavement <laughs> You know, I live in a country where you can eat on terraces and stuff. I never eat outside. I like to sit outside and have a coffee or a drink or whatever. But as far as eating is concerned, I don't like eating on the pavement. Like you say, you're breathing in the car fumes. There's insects outside, you know, uh, flies, cockroaches in Spain. You get cockroaches, of course. You know, don't wanna, I don't want to be eating outside. I, I don't want to be too hot. Because sometimes it can be too hot in the sun. So I want to sit inside with the air con. Thank you. But I do like sitting outside having a coffee or a glass of wine or a Coke or something. That's nice. Sitting in the sun. But, you know, sitting in sort of sweating, eating my lunch or my evening meal is not my idea of fun. So, uh, you know, I, I don't really like that. Mm. Well, you can't afford to eat in a restaurant in the UK, can you? I mean, it's so expensive. Uh, it's very difficult. Oh, my. yes, pint of wine. Did, have you all had a pint of wine recently? That was a Brexit benefit. Now we can forget these metric crap. We can buy a pint of wine. Do you know what I'm going to do? When I go to the, I will go to the UK sometime this year in the summer. I'm going to buy a pint of wine <laughs> deliberately. <laughs> I'm going to buy a pint of wine just for the hell of it. Just, <laughs> just, just to say that I've had a pint of wine. <laughs> yeah, pint of wine. So is a pint more than a litre? I don't really understand about um I don't really understand about measures. So is a pint more than a because a normal bottle of wine is 75 CL, whatever they are, isn't it? 75. And then you can get a litre bottle of wine normally, or uh, probably, I don't know. No, no, they're normally 75, aren't they? 75 CL. Is that bigger than a pint or smaller than a pint? Oh, oh, I'm a fish. Don't tempt me. I'd love your house in Cheshire. <laughs> it is near my goal. Cheshire's beautiful, isn't it? It's a uh, because it, I, when I lived in 
Manchester. I lived in Charlton. I don't know if, any, if you know it, but that is near it's South Manchester. It's not that far from Cheshire. It's not in Cheshire. Yeah, I could drink a what Now, all this talking about wine, now I feel like I want a glass of wine. I've got no wine in the house. No beer, no nothing, no nada. I've got ginger tea. I've been so good with my ginger tea trying to sort my throat out. 1.5 pints is a litre. Oh, Glasgow, you know, I'm getting all these invitations. I have to do a road trip one day, do a tour. <laughs> Vicky Marie Charles goes on tour. <laughs> Oh, dear. Yeah, there's so many nice restaurants in Spain. I mean, it, it does spoil you for going anywhere else because there's so many, and they're cheap, you know, good value, nice food, nice wine, beer, you know, normally all included in the menu del dia or something like that for about 15 euros. So you can imagine me when I go to the UK, I normally eat in Greg's. Can't afford to eat anywhere else in the UK. Can't afford to eat out in the UK. You know, sometimes I get taken out and that's nice because uh, I can't afford to eat in a UK restaurant. Bloody hell, it's like I could buy like five meals in a, for the price of one meal I <laughs> get in a UK restaurant. So my my go to restaurant in the UK is Greg's. <laughs> uh, yeah, we hire a minibus and travel the country drinking pints of wine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh gosh, somebody needs to send me a photo of um. Somebody needs to send me a photo of them drinking out of a pint of wine. Yeah. Where is Via Martin? Yeah. Via Martin Piazza. What area is it in? Yeah. Come on. So don't forget. First, um, try and set, I'll show it on the, me oh, it's Members Live tomorrow. Also, on Members Live tomorrow, we're going to be talking about star signs of serial killing. Don't even ask me where I got that idea from. I just thought it would be something, oh, do you see the dog pop up there? Hello. Hello, Tia. Hello, baby. Are you so cute? Are you so cute? You're cute when you're not barking. You're cute when you're not barking, aren't you? Yeah, she's, oh, she's beautiful. Yeah, when she's quiet, she's beautiful. So, yeah, I don't know why. I just saw something on something about... It's really interesting because serial killers tend to have the same horoscopes. So uh, we're going to have a little look at that tomorrow and we'll have a laugh. Not Leos. No, Chumba, not many Leos. Leos are not one of the most common serial killer horoscopes. But anyway, we'll find out about that tomorrow. But, uh, yeah, I'm hungry now. I, and I, I like um, the cheese bakes in Craig's. So that would be nice, wouldn't it? Next time I go to the UK, I'm going to get some Greg's and a pint of wine. <laughs> oh, I'm obsessed with having a pint of wine now, but okay so i hope you thank you so much for watching i hope uh, i hope you've enjoyed the video i hope you found it interesting <clears throat> remember to press like remember to press like leave your fingerprint on the um like button and if you're not subscribed please consider subscribing because there's a lot because there's a lot of people watching at home not everybody that's but please subscribe if you're not subscribed because that's a free way of helping my channel uh but I'll, and i'm back tomorrow in a live for the but it's members live tomorrow and we're going to talk about serial killer horoscopes I think it'll be interesting um but i'll be back i'm sure 
in this crazy world we live in there's always something to talk about isn't there hi sue there's always something to talk about in this mad world so i'll see you really soon in the next video and until then as always may your god go with you bye